Thank you so much, Vena. I'm absolutely delighted. I'm made up. I've never so much as placed in a competition before, so I'm blown away. Um, this is Picture Window. It appeared overnight in Wetton's farm, in his second largest meadow, where he'd planned to graze the lambs when better weather came. He found a broken bicycle last June, crooked like a bad fool. And once the fridge, still cold from the night, with a single egg left in the door like a prayer, but never the picture window with diamond glass, cropped in grass to separate the sky from sky. They had to come and fetch him in that evening, the day gone, sitting by its panelled frame, and through the weeks that followed, he was drawn in the way a tongue is drawn to the hole where a tooth should be. When they nagged him for it, he could only say that there'd always been an inside and an outside to that field, that for the first time he could look through clear from one to the other. I'm just going to read three more poems. So with the first one, you know that feeling when you're, you're watching a, an action film normally, and it turns out that not only is the ship's chef XSAS, but he seems to have the ability when five people are firing machine guns at him to dodge all of the bullets by the cunning technique of bending over a bit as he runs. Yeah, so you suspend your disbelief. Um, and as an asthmatic, I find myself doing that more than most because I find it fairly implausible when someone runs up a flight of stairs. Um, so this is called An Asthmatic Suspends Her Disbelief. No one else in the cinema seemed surprised that Bond, who started to run in Pall Mall, is still at full tilt by St. Paul's. That sheet littered the south bank with stuntmen, each sprinting their 200 yards for the camera, then wheezing a heaved bag of air on the pavement. The smoke in the bar is CGI. Each fake cigarette has its hand-painted curl to be plotted on screen, tracked to pixels of thickening air. She holds her note. No one coughs. This is art. The nicotine lamps on the ceiling. The way her song pans in white rings. Which of these is impossible? To run after a speeding train? To catch it? To catch it in one hand? He kisses her for 10 seconds, 20. They film that scene with an oxygen tube hidden just out of sight. They make weather with green screen. I understand where reality stops. Don't believe him when he steps from steam to arctic rushing air, his breath immaculate. <laughs> so, those of you in the room who can write will know what it's like when you go to workshops and when you sit in a workshop you tend to do this thing where you take out all the poety words from poems, um, you know, all of the, the shards and the patinas and things like that. Um, I was sitting in a workshop and someone brought a poem that had a soul in it. You're like, you can't have that. That's way too poetic. I have to say that out. And I, I don't know about anyone else, but that brings out the worst in me. So at that point, I decided to write an entire poem about souls. Mm. Um, now, I'm an atheist, so I don't believe in souls, so that made it a little more difficult. But I didn't let it stop me. And though I'm not the believing type, I'd believe in the iron souls of frames, a hollow soul for carrying things, with a spark blown through its fingers. I believe in the souls of dry stone walls that rise up in rough hands and hold themselves, that where the wind on one side, moss on the other, and stand for nothing except to turn sheep back. 
I believe in the fragile souls of light bulbs, metallic and easily broken, or dim to find the ugly clay soul of the norm. I believe in souls like chocolate buttons that start to melt as you hold them, in souls that aren't souls, but chemistry, in the way that carbon breaks and heals through all its different incarnations, from the slippery memory of pencil lead to the beautiful laboratory of leaves. I'm just going to finish up with, with one last poem, which is my favourite poem book to read in anyway, um, but I'd have to read it because three of the people I name check up on the, in it are actually in the room uh, and I'm probably putting their heads in their hands as I speak. It's called The Women I've Worked With. This is a song for the women I've worked with, for the plasters I've borrowed, the aspirin, for the Friday Prosecco, the trainers they wear to commute and the heels that they work in. This is a song for Lita and Lisa, for Anna, Roxanne, for Laura, for Helen, for Trudy, for Anne, for the women who stayed in the office till seven so I wouldn't be there till nine. This is a song for the women I've worked with, the spare pair of tights in the bottom desk drawer, for the lift shaft wrapped in Christmas paper, for falling upstairs with the tea. This is for Julie, who sits by reception, who saw a man's face fall on one side and stayed with him, called an ambulance crew, up spiral stairs with a stretcher to fetch him. This is a song for the women I've worked with, who wear dresses and jackets, not suits, who can show an inch of thigh in purple tights and still mean business. This is their song. May every Friday be Cake Friday. May Grey never touch them. May their passwords be strong. Thank you very much. Thank you.